The Snowflake by Arthur Weir, read for LibriVox.org by Jason in Panama. Fierce Neptune's daughter beneath the water, in grottoes cold dwelt I, and laughing hid in the sea shell's lid as fishes arrowed by. My feet were free to the undersea, I played amidst its gloom and in the deep where the mermaids weep above the hero's tomb where the sea snake strips dainty maiden lips of kisses once so warm and the lifeless child by the eddies wild is torn from the mother's arm the foam-browed billow my head would pillow upon its bosom fair while the restless sweep of the moon led deep would drift us here and there i oft would float in the dainty boat the nautilus oared for me out far far out where a noisy rout of breakers leapt in glee or further urge to the world's dim verge where heaven meets the wave and the seagull's wing was the only thing to follow us was brave then called by the blast as it glided past i would turn and clap my hands as the waves were tossed on the tropic coast and furrowed the silver sands where with weedy locks the bare-limbed rocks bend over the foaming sea i oft resorted and as i sported the sunbeams played with me we would dance all day in the prismed spray or in the blossoms hide that trembling clung to the crags and hung above the boiling tide oft times the cool green depths of a pool would lure me down to rest till the sunbeams came in a path of flame and found me in my nest with colors gaily they decked me daily and tempted me to fly afar from the foam of my ocean home aloft in the cloudless sky but i said them nay for the leaping spray and cool green depths of sea than the flight of birds and the sunbeams words were dearer far to me i had seen i said to the sky o'erhead my sisters laughing soar for a merry flight through the azure bright and never saw them more i love my home in the ocean foam i love the moonlit sands and i would sigh in the depths of sky and die in distant lands but who can prove to the plea of love unyielding and unkind at love's low call we hasten all like leaves at the voice of wind and ere the moon at the light's high noon had twelve times orbed grown my heart was stirred at a whispered word my soul was not mine own my lover was fair as the balmy air that follows after storm when the careless sea with a song of glee trips over the shallows warm he was the first through the gloom that burst to bring the dawn to me and he was the last from my sight that passed when darkness walked the sea one shimmering day as asleep i lay upon the tide-worn sand he stole apart with an eager heart from all the sunny band he came to me as i lay thought free and bent my couch above and while i slumbered with words unnumbered he pleaded for my love then as i woke at the words he spoke and rising turned to flee i was closely pressed to his ardent breast and kisses were rained on me my heart's own dearest he cried why fearest thou to take flight with me is there aught more fair than the realms of air in yonder sullen sea is the seagull's scream or the under gleam of billows rushing by more sweet to thee than the melody of larks in the azure sky o oh, be thou my bride and side by side we'll float upon the breeze or river and town or forest and down wherever we twain shall please we'll swim in the wine of the luscious vine which brims the crystal high and when of her lover the fond words move her we'll dance in the maiden's eye 
We'll scale vast mountains and o'er gay fountains hover in noon's warm glare, and when night lowers shall sleep in flowers that sway in the dewy air. And shouldst thou tire nor more desire the airy plains to roam, but pine again for the leaping main and the drench of flying foam, we need but glide on the leaf-sown tide of some swift coursing stream to our home at last and the happy past shall be but a varied dream i could but yield as he thus appealed and clasping hand in hand with a parting glance at the sea's expanse dun rocks and silver strand we mounted high in the glowing sky and leaving home behind fared swiftly forth to the distant north upon the balmy wind o'er tangled brakes where the twilight makes for evermore its home and the tiger sleeps and the cobra creeps and prowling jackals roam we floated past till the hills at last to bar our path appeared and many a peak its forehead bleak and tawny flanks upreared o'er many a clift in the rocks bereft of life and the sunlight's sheen wild torrents were hurled to the underworld and wheeled the eagles keen in faltering lines the famished pines pressed up the mountain sides and sang to the blast as it hurried past the song of the ocean tides till i yearned once more for the tropic shore beside the emerald waves and my sister's gay and the dashing spray and ocean's weedy caves on on we went till the distance lent the hills an azure hue and the earth beneath was a naked heath where winds in anger blew we saw the smoke like a wave that broke above the homes of men and in the bowers of the meadow flowers took rest for flight again a myriad sights were a thousand delights as on through space we sped but the happy day soon faded away and the sun in the west lay dead then the shadows of death with their icy breath drew ever more surely nigh and in frightened crowds the murky clouds swept under the ebon sky afar in the north a fire flamed forth and flickered with ghastly light like a lamp that burns when a soul returns to god in the dead of night gloom blotted the hills and the tinkling rills were bound in frosty chains and the flowers once gay all lifeless lay upon the dreary plains there was no sound in the air around no voice upon earth below save the angry beat of the wild wind's feet that wandered to and fro in a frenzy of fear with many a tear i clung to my darling's breast for the wintry night with its baleful light my timorous soul distressed beloved he cried sweet sea-nurtured bride my love brings sorrow to thee for i feel at my heart the pitiless dart that death has made keen for me i cried there are caves in the amethyst waves wherein love may make life sweet oh haste and return ere the elements stern have beaten us under their feet there was no reply to my passionate cry no answering kiss to mine and i felt in the storm from my trembling form my lover's arms untwined all heavy he grew like a wounded sea mew that dies in the midmost air and fell without sound to the frosty ground and lay like a dead bird there the tresses of gold on his forehead cold i parted and kissed his brow but his lips nor smiled at my fondling wild his eyes nor knew me now and the icy blast as it thundered past the hollow wherein he lay tore him apart from my anguished heart and carried him away i heard the trees moan in an undertone as the storm king struck them low and the river flood grew still as he stood and bade it cease to flow there was no flower in that sad hour had strength to lift its head and i was alone in a land unknown and mourned my love for dead 
Then, in countless hosts like white-robed ghosts, My sisters lost drew near, And hemmed me round, But they made no sound my breaking heart to cheer. Each wore a star that glittered afar amid her flowing hair, And they went and came like the lightless flame that pierced the northern air. They floated high to the pitiless sky and gathered on the heath, Till their myriad feet did mingle and meet and hide the earth beneath. And was it a dream that I should seem a snowy robe to dawn, And tread without pleasure their swift weird measure as the wintry wind piped on? Methought we flowed through that drear abode in sheets of spray and foam, As erst with hope and mirth on the slope of waves in our ocean home. Then many a day in a trance I lay upon the dreary plain, Till at last I heard the pipe of a bird, and my heart grew warm again. At the bird's sweet call through night's thick pall, The faint sun peered and shone, As of yore at home through the flying foam He looked from the gates of dawn. He looked and smiled, and the air beguiled Grew warm and bright again, and my sisters all, each to each, did call, as erst in the joyous main. Like the leaping rills from the sunny hills that tinkle to the sea, they sang as they glanced in the sun and danced on the rivers rushing free. The flowers awoke from their sleep and broke with many an emerald spear, and banner bright to the warm sunlight through the leaves of the bygone year and one with a crown of gold bent down and took me to its heart poor waif of the storm it said grow warm and share of my joy a part in the sky above there are many will love a heart as pure as thine leave grief with the past like the shadow we cast as we hasten where sunbeams shine i dwelt in the bower of the generous flower for many a quiet day Till, on soft winds blown, the seeds were sown, and then I wandered away. For sake of my love, the sun above upraised me to the sky, and east and west I went on my quest, but my dear one found not I. Oft I heard from brooks in shadowy nooks my sisters call to me, to join their throng as they drifted along, seeking the distant sea. And hearing their lays in the woodwind ways through autumn's golden air, a yearning came that I could not name stronger than my despair. If I must live on when my love is gone, I murmured to my soul, oh, let it be by the throbbing sea my sisters make their goal. There let me rest like a child on the breast close to its great warm heart, till my sorrows cease and I am at peace, O oh, lover where thou art so i sought the brook and the sky forsook and reached the sea at last in whose briny waves and weedy caves i brood upon the past end of poem this recording is in the public domain the mask of the year by arthur weir read for LibriVox.org by eva davis Time is discovered, seated in the midst of a bevy of maidens, each of whom represents a month. Time Behold me, time, inexorable time, twin brother of death. Like him, all hearts I tame. As babes with baubles play, so I with fame. I weigh all deeds, judge every poet's rhyme, sift heroes, smile at life's quaint pantomime put down the present great and oft reclaim from sad oblivion some forgotten name uplifting it to heights that are sublime i sit amid the months upon my throne waiting to greet the new year drawing nigh and though it brings a destiny unknown not need ye fear since god is in the sky Fate is God's choice, be therefore of good cheer. Let mirth and song welcome each new crowned year. 
January. Far have I come out of darkness, from chaos, the land of the future, dread realm unknown, out of silence, alone. I have trodden the ice fields of drear bacalaos, heard the grinding of bergs in the seas of the north as the gale urged them forth, and at midday have looked on the sun's feeble glory with a smile of disdain, for the warmth that he felt ne'er my bosom should melt. Death and stillness are mine, and, save wolves on a foray, all is still, all is shrouded, all nature's asleep, under snow hidden deep. I am the ruler of uncreate chaos, queen of absolute void, which life comes not anear, first month of the year. February I am the month of beginnings. I bear in my bosom the seed of all changes to come. As yet I am dumb, but hope has been born in the breast of despair. The pine boughs stir under their burden of snow, as though promise they know. Yet the sun shines no stronger, there's naught that foretells the coming of summer. No song of a bird in the woodland is heard, not a sound save the stroke of the axe as it fells some wood king whose form sinks beneath the keen blade with a crash through the glade. Yet the spirit of nature's awake, and the air thrills with love. I soothe grief with my wonderful balm, second month that I am. March I am the month of unrest and of yearning, of wild and untamable hatred and love. I glide through the grove, calling on summer so slow in returning i seek for the fruit bud leaf blossom and all when they heed not my call the winds i unleash which like hounds on the scent give voice round the farmsteads and course o'er the moors with a hundred detours till they leap on the forests whose branches are rent i heap up the snowdrifts bind firmer the streams and defy the sun's beams. My heart throbs with hate, and all tenderness burning, with winter again I span heaven's blue arch. I am passionate March. April I am the month of transition. My breast heaves with sweet, delicate hope that beguiles dreamy earth into smiles. Through woodlands deserted I go on my quest and summon the blood-root and shad-bush to flower, though they fade in an hour. I drop gentle rain on the faded brown grasses, and loosen the soil for all tender green shoots to push up from their roots. I summon the birds, and where my foot passes, sleeping nature arouses itself at my call. I am helpful to all. While no ecstasy's mine, I am never distressed, but tranquilly wander to fate reconciled. I am April, the mild. May I am the month of gay summer's beginning, when earth with its verdure smiles up at the sky, and the mayflowers shy, and sun-loving blossoms their way to light winning, through strewn leaves of autumn, mute emblems of death perfume with their breath the zephyrs released from their fetters of frost the streams murmur cheerily under their banks their melodious thanks for sweet freedom regained as they flow and are lost in the broad sunny river that rushes along to the sea with a song chill winter's forgot with its woe and its sinning youth leaps in my veins i am young i am gay 
I am love kindling May. June. I am the month of sweet virginal joy, when earth, as the sun its first passion discloses, blushes with roses. When all things are new and nothing can cloy, the birds in a cloudland of leafage concealed by their songs are revealed all is young all is love in the shadowy vales in woodland and meadow all natures awake at the wind's kiss the lake breaks forth into smiles but as yet passion fails to weary itself soul is searching for soul and has not reached its goal life leaping to life doth each moment employ and love doth all nature's grand chorus attune i am virginal june july i am the month of warm passionate love when earth silent lies with shy longings oppressed while soft sighs stir her breast all unclasped is her zone and the sun's warm lips prove her lips ruby treasures and make her soul his with many a kiss i wander abroad in the murmurous hours while the silvery moonbeams sift down on the scene rustling leafage between I whisper of joy to the slumbering flowers, as, with petals close folded, like a child's hands in prayer, they rest on the air. And I drop cooling dews from the clear sky above, on the moist brow of earth, as still she doth sigh. I am July. August i am the month of sweet languor and dreaming in the shadowy depths of the woods i recline while afar stand the kine thoughtful knee-deep where cool waters are streaming over the sands and at hand loud and clear the cicada i hear afar by the plunging green waves of the sea i wander at times when the shimmer of heat disturbs my retreat or amid rugged crags where the wind wanders free i sit in the shelter of hills by the brook that leaps forth from its nook adown the swart cliff with its silver spray gleaming and i muse on the past with a rapturous sigh dreamy august am i september i am the month that brings peace to the weary the flush to the apple the gold to the leaf and the grain to the sheaf i am the month that prepares for the dreary long days of midwinter when earth lies asleep under snow hidden deep after the yearning of spring and the passion of hot days of summer i cool the warm brow and the seeds that the plough gave to earth i give back shaped in daintier fashion at the touch of my hand every toiler forgets all life's weeds and its frets and the heart that was grieving becomes again cheery when i rule men no longer their sorrows remember i am september october i am the hush ere the coming of storm i am the eventide lulling to rest upon earth's kindly breast her offspring the flowers till they nestle up warm folding their leaves and their blossomy eyes closing childwise i warn the still woodland that doffs its gay dress and upsprings like a warrior armed for the fray to meet the dread day when the tempest's huge shoulders against it shall press i breathe to the streams the fell tidings until every bickering rill 
with a tremor of fear seaward hurls its lithe form in mad flight ere with fetters the ice king draws nigh october am i november i am the priestess of frost and i bring the winds in my train i am vestured in snow and wherever i go the ice maidens deck me with jewels and fling crystal arches over streams that flow sombrely by beneath the gray sky earth under my feet a soft carpeting spreads and from valley and hill as i pass on my rounds there re-echo no sounds the lean famished forests bow down their high heads as among them i wander the stars hold their breath as dread omen of death flits the mystic aurora with rustling wing high above and some meteor falls like an ember i am november december i am the month when worn earth lies at rest under the eiderdown snow that clings close to her form in repose as her gossamer drape to the virgin whose breast rises and falls as she dreams of her love through the keen air above the stars glow like watchfires of summer anon come the jingle of sleigh bells a laugh and a shout as gay youth in mad rout sweeps merrily down the white road and is gone then silence returns till the winds howl in glee or some frost-riven tree shrieks aloud in its pain yet earth sleeps undistressed all ended her task she has not now to fear december is here the clock strikes january one february two march three april four may five june six july seven august eight september nine october ten november eleven december twelve the new year enters the new year i am here i have come from the home of the morning i am flushed with hope's wine i have treasures for all the old year is sped let it serve as a warning that the moments i bring shall bear fruit ere they fall the past none can alter its grief and its sinning are writ for all time in the volume of life but behold me the new year new records beginning let love be their burden not envy and strife chorus of months welcome welcome with chime of merry bell welcome to thy kingdom o monarch pure and true in gladness we will serve thee ah rule this great earth well efface the sorrows of the past and all past joys renew we the children of the sun who watch the precious moments run will wreathe thy brow with stars of snow and flowers sweet and fair but while we sow the fruits of earth that man shall garner in with mirth to time alone belongs the power of harvesting each ripened hour welcome welcome with chime of merry bell another year is given to man to sow and reap his life when next the mystic book is sealed what story will it tell will it speak of love triumphant will it tell of sin and strife o mortal man remember every year has its december and when the year has ended naught can change the record there End of poem.
This recording is in the public domain. The Muse and the Pen by Arthur Weir. Read for LibriVox.org by Betty B. The Muse and the Pen. The Muse, renowned in ancient story, but seldom seen these humdrum times, came down to earth in all her glory to put new life in modern rhymes. Forsooth, she said, I'm tired of hearing mechanic singers, every one, with forced conceits and thin veneering serving the lamp and not the sun the muse was but a simple maiden who loved the woodlands meads and streams with odorous buds her gown was laden her hair was bright with rippling gleams and murmuring an arcadian ditty she wandered with uncertain feet in wonder through the crowded city bewildered by each clattering street she gazed upon the hurrying mortals each busy with his own affairs she spooned some lauded poet's portals let monthlies print such stuff as theirs a milkman nodded her a cheery bonjour mamselle in ready french and as she passed a cabman beery he hiccuped there's a likely wench she met a red-faced buxom chloe a dapper strephon full of airs the one in vesture cheap and showy the other versed in brutal stares and shocked and weary hot and muddy into the nearest house she turned and found herself within the study of one whose pen his living earned she looked quite curiously about her being of a curious turn of mind to learn if he did also flout her and still in life some pleasure find shortly she marked his desk half hidden beneath a mass of copious notes and turned to it and read unchidden of chartered banks and chartered boats she read the crops were thriving better but that the country needed rain and then another item met her on watered stocks the country's bane she read of interest rates as under with money still in poor demand and let the item fall to wonder were poets wealthy in the land she read that none who float on paper long raise the wind for all their craft bulls up a tree a market caper a house in trouble with a draught she read of butter growing stronger and cheese more lively every day that baker's flour will rise no longer and of a serious cut in hay as still she turned the litter over reading an item now and then she did beneath the pile discover and pounce upon the writer's pen and by the charm the muse possesses she'd made it speak like flesh and blood o oh, happy pen to have her tresses fall round thee in that solitude dear pen she cried in what strange service is this i find thy skill employed thy master's style seems bright and nervous yet is of sense a little void the pen replied o oh, gracious lady trade questions are considered here and thou wilt find transactions shady by master's hand made easily clear the pouting muse her pretty shoulder shrugged as she listened to the pen thy master must then ice be colder if thus content to write for men go bid him frame a graceful sonnet a simple poem from his heart and i will gently breathe upon it and to its body life impart again the pen o oh goddess puissant my master lacks nor heart nor skill to turn a stanza but of recent days he hath hungry mouths to fill he loves thee but he may not show it and pegasus must drag the plough for men who starve him as a poet who earns at least a pittance now the muse waxed wroth would not my beauty all else thy master make forget the pen replied the path of duty my master hath not swerved from yet thy beauty haunts his every vision sweet on his ear thine accents fall yet could he tread the fields elysian thinkest thou while suffering loved ones call but i can make his name immortal immortal shame replied the pen when he should pass death's sombre portal and stand before his god what then he hath a godlike awful function to shield his own from want and wrong wouldst have him then without compunction barter his birthright for a song i am his trusted friend unflagging 
i help him win his daily bread though heart may ache or thought be lagging still must the ink be ever shed yet oft he lays me down and sighing looks through the casement at the stars and then i know his soul is trying vainly to pass beyond its bars a soldier in the war of labor he battles on from day to day swinging the gold compelling sabre nor finding time to pluck a spray nay more he must through glorious bowers press harshly on with heavy tread crushing to earth the beauteous flowers with which he fain had wreathed thy head the muse grew pensive softly sighing she said now pity him i can strong purposeful and self-denying here i have what i seek a man would that this noble self-surrender these high resolves this purpose stern might yet the grander verse engender and brighter make his genius burn how grief must gnaw his heart asunder as still fate balks him day by day nay cried the pen thou mayest wonder but know my master's heart is gay perchance at times a pang concealing his face grows sad but not for long for sweet loved arms around him stealing fill all his soul with unvoiced song the muse above the table bending laid her warm lips upon the pen a thrill throughout its fibres sending this for thy master slowly then she passed away and after never the writer laboured but a throng of fancies cheered him singing ever the muse hath crowned each unvoiced song end of poem this recording is in the public domain the beaver meadow by arthur weir read for librivox dot org by betty b the beaver meadow tis a meadow green as an emerald's heart in the heart of an emerald wood and a crystal stream doth loiter and dart through the sun-smitten solitude the orioles glance like flashes of fire from foliage limb to limb and the harsh frogs pipe in a ceaseless choir from the marsh when day grows dim when the gray cold dawn in her robes of mist o'er meadow and wood and stream looks forth from her tower of amethyst she sees the wild duck gleam in the slender reeds that have waded out far out in the sinuous brook and she hears the loon like a wary scout shrill keen from his secret nook long years ago when our fathers first fearless and full of hope with love of venture and wealth athirst o'er river and mountain slope to this woodland came a lakelet lay as bright as a burnished shield where now the rivulet waters play and the loud frogs pipe concealed and a wonderful town with its sunward domes and wondrous people stood where the deep-mouthed frogs have now their homes and the wild ducks lurk and brood grand were the fronts and the pictured walls of the inca's ancient sway but the town that stood where the streamlet calls more wondrous was than they not a listless brain nor an idle hand was there in all that town but strong defences the people planned and hewed the great trees down the rippling stream with consummate art in barriers huge they pent and made their home in the new lake's heart and dwelt therein content but woe to the town and its people all earth giveth no deathless joy and where man's merciless glances fall the simple they fain destroy the brutal and covetous spanish horde that raided the aztec land put its people and chieftains to the sword its cities to the brand and here in this northern wilderness this wonderful beaver town that baffled the elemental stress before our sires went down its stately domes and its barriers vast its sinuous streets its lake the hunter destroyed and overcast for a little riches sake he slaughtered the noble beaver kings and loosened the fettered stream and now the reeds like a thousand strings with music as of a dream in the night wind mourned the departed lake and the stately beaver town while the rippling waves in the rushes break as the stream goes eddying down and musing here on the grassy site of the beaver colony my soul is carried in fancy's flight 
to the site of ville marie where the hochelagans or beaver race of indians dwelt of old their name renowned from their mountain's base to where the ocean rolled hochelaga the beaver meadow meant and where the beaver dwelt long since the white man pitched his tent and before heaven knelt he felled the trees and he stayed the tide of tribesmen rushing down and like the beaver he builded wide and strong a mighty town the curious skill in the council sage and the beaver's love of toil became as well his heritage as the broad and fruitful soil then honor be to the beaver's name and praise to the beaver's skill and in the labor that makes for fame may we all prove beavers still end of poem this recording is in the public domain voyager song by arthur weir read for librivox dot org by jason in panama voyager song our mother is the good green earth our rest her bosom broad and sure in plenty and in dearth of our six feet of sod we welcome fate with careless mirth and dangerous paths have trod holding our lives of little worth and fearing none but god where ankle-deep bright streamlets slide above the fretted sand our frail canoes like shadows glide swift through the silent land nor should broad-shouldered in some tide rocks rise on every hand our path will we confess denied nor cowardly seek the strand the foam may leap like frightened cloud that hears the tempest scream the waves may fold their whitened shroud where ghastly ledges gleam with muscles strained and backs well bowed and poles that breaking seem we shoot the salt whose torrent proud itself our lord did deem the broad traverse is cold and deep and treacherous smiles it hath and with its sickle of death doth reap with woe for aftermath but though the wind-vexed waves may leap like cougars in our path still forward on our way we keep nor heed their futile wrath where bitter trackless wastes of snow beneath the northern light on netted shoes we noiseless go nor heed though keen winds bite the shaggy bears our prowess know the white fox fears our might and wolves when warm our campfires glow with angry snarls take flight where forest fastness extend ne'er trod by man before where cries of loon and wild duck blend with some dark torrent's roar and timid deer unawed descend along the lake's still shore we blaze the trees and onward wend to ravish nature's store Lev lev and kush at morn and eve these calls that echoes wake we rise and forward fare nor grieve though long portage we make until the sky the sun gleams leave and shadows cowl the lake and then we rest and fancies weave for wife or sweetheart's sake end of poem this recording is in the public domain Dedicatory Ode by Arthur Weir Read for LibriVox.org by Jason in Panama Dedicatory Ode Read at the unveiling of the monument erected in the Parliament grounds at Ottawa to the memory of the Right Honorable Sir John A. Macdonald. Here in the solemn shadow of these walls, wherein his voice long held the land in sway, here where the cadence of the distant falls seems a lament for grandeur passed away we who have reaped where he had sown now bring to him this thanksgiving this tribute to the unforgotten great that for all time men may revere his name and children learn the secret of true fame true greatness emulate we paid long since the tribute of our tears when at his post the veteran statesman died but now that grief has been assuaged by years we mourn not 
but rejoice with sober pride that one of earth's immortals wise and strong dwelt in our midst so long teaching large thoughts of love and liberty and atlas like upon his shoulders bore our world of care until life's turmoil o'er he passed from us away he found the seven sisters of the north the sea queen's daughters in primeval woods by lonely streams lamenting and them forth he led from desert lands and solitudes the pleiades of nations they have shone upon britannia's throne with every passing year their golden light waxing in lustre until every land in wonder looks upon the glorious band that breaks the northern light he walked through life triumphant fortune's son what were to others barriers were to him but gates through which his high success was won he held strange spirit commune with the dim shapes of the future his far-reaching mind some harmony did find in elements discordant and man's strength and weakness served with him the noble end to build a nation and all factions blend in brotherhood at length and shall we in whose midst so long he dwelt who had communed so long with his great mind forsake his teachings and like israel melt our gold to rear false gods shall we grow blind to those large thoughts that tolerance which long made this dominion strong nay never so he left an heritage worthy of himself and us be ours the pride to bind this new dominion rich and wide closer from age to age end of poem this recording is in the public domain Entering Port by Arthur Weir, read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson. In Memoriam, the Right Honorable Sir John S. D. Thompson. Hark to the solemn gun and tolling bell. What ship is this that dark as night or death is entering port upon the sullen swell, while an expectant nation holds its breath? From many a threatening port her cannon gape, above her deck the flag of Britain flies. Like some a sad dream she comes, her somber shape crushing the waves that in her pathway rise. One of the sea queen's ocean walls is she, grim guardian of her honor, yet that prow ne'er upon nobler errand it cleft the sea, nor guarded Britain's honor more than now. Day after day uprose the golden sun, night after night it sank beneath the wave pointing the vessel on that carried one the empire honored in his western grave as truth led that song soul where'er it would onward through strife to honor without stain so is he brought through ocean solitude with but the billows for his funeral train no warrior he the blood of men that shed his was the higher task to make them one and Canada, awaiting now her dead, with tears attests the task was nobly done. Yet not within this seaborne funeral car the patriot lies. He is no longer here, but onward, upward still, he journeys far beyond our ken to some still nobler sphere. The harbor of his earthly wishes won, fresh from new honors from his sovereign's hand, to him the summons came, earth's voyage done. He set his bark towards the eternal strand. He has gone forth and leaves us but his name, And this cold clay that waits the silent tomb. Yet passing years shall never dim his fame, Nor love forget him in their gathering gloom. With tolling bell and beat of muffled drum, With mournful boom of cannon, Lay him down within the sepulchre, To which shall come faintly the murmur of his native town in death he knit the empire closer yet causing unnumbered hearts to throb as one here by his tomb may canada forget the bigotry that he had fain undone with his queen's wreath upon his pulseless breast lulled by the murmur of the restless wave life's voyage done 
he takes his well-earned rest in port at last with god beyond the grave end of poem this recording is in the public domain wildflowers by arthur weir read for LibriVox.org by nemo in arcady the happy swain who wandered through the woods and meadows oft turned his head and oft was fain to start or smile at shifting shadows sometimes within a verdant brake he saw a wood nymph's graceful form gleam white and felt her beauty make his heart beat fast his cheek grow warm sometimes while loitering by a brook whose ripples dreamy music made he spied in some sequestered nook a naiad on the marge who played but when the breeze the leafage stirred on drowsy summer afternoons sometimes afar he thought he heard the satyrs pipe the merry tunes but jupiter no longer woos and tyope nor venus's lips tremble as she adonis sues and he from her embracement slips no longer nymph or naiad now nor fawn nor satyr haunts the wood gone is diana with her bow the woodland is a solitude are nymph and naiad gone indeed and is there now no arcady a fairy choir in wood and mead in gentle accents answer nay and those who leave the world awhile with nature's spirit to commune may still see nymphs in woodland isle and naiads bathe at sunny noon besides the murmurous streams that wind beneath the tangled foliage meshes some sleeping naiad we may find with charms the inmost soul deems precious and deep within the tawny shade of pathless forest we may meet some true wood nymph who unafraid receives us in her cool retreat at every step through sunny wood beneath our feet the wildflowers spring nymphs of that sylvan solitude that us to love their beauty bring and still we follow as of old the swain pursued the fleeting shape for once the graces we behold none can their mystic lure escape at every step beside the stream some nodding blossom beckons still we see its slender figure gleam chastely beside the crystal rill perchance it droops its dainty head or looks us fearless in the face ah no the naiads are not fled the stream is still their dwelling place earth's turmoil has but dulled our ears its dust has but obscured our sight the pipes of pan whoever hears will see as well the woodland sprite the revels of the leaves and wind the sudden glimpse of blossoming flowers these are his prize who leaves behind the world and strays through nature's bowers oh had i in arcadia dwelt i would have watched for every gleam of shoulder as some naiads felt clove the clear crystal of the stream i would have followed in pursuit of artful nymph through tangled brakes and heard with joy the satyr's flute whose melody soft echo wakes and so from earliest days of spring when the first wild flower lifts its head to autumn when the breezes fling broadcast the dying leaves and dead through sensuous summer's golden hours i roam the vast canadian woods seeking the wild canadian flowers true nymphs of sylvan solitudes end of poem this recording is in the public domain dedicatory ballad by arthur weir Read for LibriVox.org by J. L. Baldwin. Written for the unveiling of the monument erected by the citizens of Montreal to Paul Chomedy de Maisonneuve. The leaf in the forest had budded, a verdure, a billowy sea over the woodland was flowing, o'erwhelming valley and lee. 
the great river bright in the sunshine set the isle in a circlet of gold as it swept to its tryst with the ocean through realms of riches untold the slow-moving oar cleft the water the balmy may breeze filled the sails as the wanderers drew near their haven afar from the sea and its gales from the land of their fathers afar and anear the keen iroquois knives but the pilgrims to fear ever strangers to the cross had entrusted their lives not sordid were they not the treasures of earth had they come to pursue not for honour nor glory far nobler the object our sires had in view to carry the cross to the savage braving danger and hardship they came they came for the love of the virgin a city to found in her name their hearts were o'erflowing with gladness they sang as they drew near the strand their barks gently touched on the shingle and maisonneuve leaping to land bent his knee and the others knelt with him uplifting their voices in prayer to the ruler of all while prophetic the priest in his vestments stood there the shadows of twilight were falling the frog loudly piped in the marsh the wild duck lurked in the shadows and anear screamed the kingfisher harsh high above swept the night hawk in circles in the meadow the fireflies gleamed bright and were caught to adorn the rude altar with garlands of pulsating light the wanderers calmly sought slumber the sentinel stood at his ease the rivulet gurgled and eddied and answered the murmuring trees the mountain loomed dark in the distance and the wolf looking down from the height in wonder and awe saw the campfire that burned on a city's birth night if you ask how that mustard seed flourished and spread its great branches abroad if you ask at what sacrifice nourished or watered with what noble blood lo the pages of history answer there it is written in letters of gold how each was a christian and soldier who founded vie marie of old they lived on the confines of chaos whenever the savage horde broke on the ill-fated colony they were the first whose arm parried the stroke they were dullards in heart and went even to torture and death with a smile while the women like angels of mercy stanched their wounds and their woes did beguile none braver and no one more gentle none wiser in counsel than he maisonneuve this the new world's defender who for god held his whole life in fee he led them in worship consoled them when thickly their troubles did fall maisonneuve the undaunted the founder aeneas of old montreal and here where he battled lone-handed with savages thirsting for blood where now beats the pulse of a city the heart of a new nationhood long years may his monument stand that our children may ask and be told of the leader who founded vie marie and honor the heroes of old end of poem this recording is in the public domain. Timor Mortis Conturbat Me by Arthur Weir Read for LibriVox.org by Sonia Timor Mortis Conturbat Me The fear of death affrights me. Shall I too sing, as he sang of old, The tuneful singer beyond the sea, When life's flame sank, and his blood waxed cold timor mortis conturbat me earth is so fair to look upon and life so sweet though their sorrows be why welcome the summons to be gone timor mortis conturbat me wife that i love as the sea the moon babes that prattle about my knee has heaven itself a dearer boon timor mortis conturbat me is there heaven at all or only the grave with the lisp of rain in the willow tree will the after death give all i crave timor mortis conturbat me will there be ideals still to follow and truth like nymphs my pursuit to flee or will the ancient faith prove hollow timor mortis conturbat me are there golden suns in a golden noon are there grey still dawns on a dewy lee are there twilights there with a crescent moon timor mortis conturbat me are there aims to spur me and goals to reach are there wondrous lands for the eye to see is melody there and dulcet speech timor mortis conturbat me does friend meet friend 
and love meet love greet and converse with sober glee or is all new in the courts above timor mortis conturbat me is heaven like earth on a nobler plan as in dreams we imagine it hopefully or does the spirit forget the man timor mortis conturbat me shall i be i when the death rose past soul from the flesh set only free or in new mould shall i be recast timor mortis conturbat me if heaven be not akin to earth i shall not be i if i happy be if i be not i what is heaven worth timor mortis conturbat me end of poem this recording is in the public domain On New Year's Eve by Arthur Ware, read for LibriVox.org by Christina. The wintry moon was streaming through the window, silvery clear, and I sat in my study dreaming sweet dreams of the coming year. There was no sound save the laughter of flames on the gusty hearth as hour followed fleet hour after to welcome the year with mirth then sharp through the solemn quiet i heard in the gloomy hall the scamper of mice run riot and i heard them in the wall i leaned on my hand and listened to hear the cravens go while paler the moonbeams glisten and the fire on the hearth burn low and i was awake or sleeping that close by the door i heard the voice of a woman weeping the sigh of a farewell word and was it the night wind mocking that tapped and opened the door or was it a woman knocking and a light step on the floor i saw at my side a maiden with tears in her gentle eyes and her shapely arms were laden with gems from time's argus eyes on her brow was a white star shining on her breast was a lily fair but of rue was a sad wreath twining among her golden hair from my chair to her dear side springing i greeted her with a kiss for i thought her the new year bringing new uncut jewels of bliss she blushed at my warm embraces and joy in her sweet face shone as sunlight a shadow chases while summer cloud floats on i said i have long been yearning new year to behold thy face pale grew the maid and turning she shrank from my close embrace and wept o oh, thou fickle-hearted the depth of my love to prove yea ere from my bosom parted to sigh for an untried love i brought thee the rarest treasures time's treasury could bestow i sated thy days with pleasures and guarded thy heart from woe thy wish i refused thee never i granted thee love and peace yet thou scornest me now or ever my labour for thee doth cease see here are the gifts i showered thy life's pathway upon and now that thou hast been dowered withal canst thou wish me gone o thankless heart wilt thou never be satisfied with thy lot or must thou be pinning ever for joys that as yet are not and turn from my fond embraces and utter unknown to greet as a child a butterfly chases treading flowers beneath his feet then like the great sun springing through night to a tropic dawn my heart to the old year clinging yearning for the joys nigh gone and oh what a way of sorrow passed over my grieving soul as i thought of the new to-morrow that led to some unknown goal oh stay i cried soul shaken he not the flight of time oh stay but i was forsaken and heard the new year chime end of poem this recording is in the public domain in the closing hours by arthur weir read for librivox dot org by larry wilson in the closing hours of night when the latest guest has gone by the hearth fire's flickering light sweet it is to dream alone sweet the social joy and sweet strife that ends in victory sweeter still the peace complete 
following on the eager day then how sweet the lassitude reveling in romantic rest buoyed on dreams whose mystic flood draws the soul on happy quest in the closing hours of life when the friends of youth are gone ended lusts of gain and strife peace approaches with the dawn sweet the rest and solitude when the hair is turning white while the past with broadening flood murmurs through the closing night end of poem this recording is in the public domain where heaven is by arthur weir read for LibriVox.org by sonia where heaven is when the babe is swung in its pearly cot the warm sun shining the songbirds gay cool shades among in its lacework grot the child reclining doth dreamful sway hope's hand entwining life's harp new strung with joyous garlands its sound doth stay and he thinks earth heaven to him god given nor cares though the passing hours delay from the threshold of life on the bright pathway that stretches afar to the infinite youth yearns for the strife as a child for play and his dreamings are of a well-worn height as at dawn of day when the morning star unbinds the zone of the virgin light we watch all breathless for beauty deathless so heavens beyond us yet seems in sight and then ah then as the years go by and hope grows weary with waiting long when trust in man we must fain deny the miserere replaces song like slaves that ply in the galley stand the labouring oar through sin and wrong the soul plods on and heaven is gone we can but suffer and yet be strong when the snows of age fall thick and fast and passion has faded like flowers that grow the memory sage dreams dreams of the past and all that has made it have joys below when the friends long laid in the grave at last stand beckoning us in the twilight glow and wrongs endured prove that which cured the heaven behind us too late we know the heaven of man is never here it always is where his treasures are to-day's brief span arches little dear the stream of bliss seems wider afar from this to this the path is drear there's always something each joy to mar till the past that is real becomes ideal under the gold of life's twilight star end of poem this recording is in the public domain new year's eve by author weir read for livervox.org by liz 2017 air bill mahoon hark the tolling of the bells how it sinks and how it swells o'er the sleeping town it kneels fare thee well old year far across the snowy plains rolls the many-tongued refrain and the echoes cry again fare thee well old year thou hast been a kindly year thou hast spared us many a tear thou hast vanquished many a fear fare thee well old year lightly touched by summer showers budding hopes have grown to flowers happy days have flown like hours fare thee well old year many a lesson thou hast taught precious favours thou hast brought pleasant changes thou hast wrought fare thee well old year now thy rule is near an end thy last records have been penned we must part at last true friend fare thee well old year close and seal the book of fate with whatever it may relate sin and goodness love and hate fare thee well old year one more volume is complete take it to the mercy seat lay it at the master's feet fare thee well old year refrain fare thee well old year fare thee well old year thou hast been a faithful friend fare thee well old year end of poem this recording is in the public domain pegasus by arthur weir read for LibriVox.org by eva davis if you find pegasus a steed scornful of your control who canters well enough indeed but will not caracole 
so much the better poet mine tis bottom wins the race let poetasters prance in fine keep you the steady pace let poetasters hunt for sound chase meters out of breath great thoughts are not thus run to ground nor fame in at the death so let your pegasus be free to hunt some thought sublime while you sit still with clinging knee and gallop simple rhyme ah friend of all the joys of earth there's nothing like the hunt the good horse straining at the girth the clear-tongued hounds in front and if your pegasus can bear you well before the rout don't curb and make him beat the air loose rein and let him out oft when a poet's rhymes i read with ornate language wrought its cadences though sweet indeed but hide the lack of thought be yours the poem that can stand from trappings wholly free each thought a phryne to be scanned in fearless nudity end of poem this recording is in the public domain it would be easy to be good by arthur weir read for LibriVox.org by iswa in belgium in january two thousand and seventeen who walks the paths of righteousness or follows ways of evil who knows the joys that angels bless or sins insensate revel at last too well has understood sin is not worth a feather it would be easy to be good if all were good together waving the conscience we offend and weighing but the pleasure though we all sinful joys might blend they make a sorry treasure the loftiest joys must be subdued the soul we feign must tether it would be easy to be good if all were good together oh would that man might give free scope to every gentle feeling the soul would realize its hope its noblest side revealing would man might trust man's brotherhood in calm and stormy weather it would be easy to be good if all were good together if no one schemed to do a wrong no need for wrong were given if each his neighbor helped along this earth would be a heaven if men once met in rectitude farewell the region's nether it would be easy to be good if all were good together end of poem this recording is in the public domain The Little Trooper by Arthur Weir Read for LibriVox.org by Tavarish Swift troopers twain ride side by side Throughout life's long campaign. They make a jest of all man's pride, And, oh, the havoc! As they ride, they cannot count their slain. The one is young and debonair, And laughing swings his blade, the zephyrs toss his golden hair his eyes are blue he is so fair he seems a masking maid the other is a warrior grim dark as a midnight storm there is no man can cope with him we shrink and tremble in each limb before his awful form yet though men fear the sombre foe more than the gold tressed youth the boy with every careless blow more than the trooper grim lays low and causes earth more ruth keener his mocking sword doth prove than flame or winter's breath men bear his wounds to the realm above for the little trooper's name is love his comrades only death End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Q. 
Cupid's Disguises by Arthur Weir, read for LibriVox.org by Tavarish. Damn Cupid wears disguises, we never see his form, till suddenly he surprises and takes the heart by storm. He hides at time in the blushes, the tinge cheek so fair, or often the moonlit hushes in a sweet voice on the air sometimes he is in the dancing of mirth in azure eyes sometimes in the curve and trancing of lips that part in sighs and sometimes in the glimmer of arm rich lace beneath sometimes in the tresses shimmer sometimes in the peep of teeth oh he's a little bandit and bold as bold can be he leads us single-handed into captivity for none is a match for cupid he swifter is than thought the keenest mind is but stupid when he begins to plot end of poem this recording is in the public domain music by Arthur Weir, read for LibriVox.org by Tavarish. Life hath such longings, bitter sweet, and yet so few it satisfies, that men feign dreams life is complete only beyond the skies. And like the mystic cloud of fire that guided Israel's way by night, every unsatisfied desire leads man towards the right around him mingling with the dust youth's pure ideals shattered lie hope virtue charity and trust amid life's deserts die fade aspirations fades each dream of goodness honor and renown man floats on a polluted stream which fain would drag him down but music like the nightingale that sweetly sings in woodland breaks when hope and trust and virtue fail man's nobler nature wakes only in music doth man find an echo of the dreams of youth when he saw gods among mankind in woman only truth end of poem this recording is in the public domain baby's stocking by arthur weir read for librivox .org by tavarish baby's dainty little stocking hangs beside his wicker cot darling mother's wishes mocking and the treasures she has brought for it is so small that never gift can find a place inside was the doting mother ever so distressed at christmas tide baby's eyes are closed and dreaming of the gentle mother face baby's hands are clasped and seeming interlocked in fond embrace baby's lips are softly smiling and the rubicon of youth he has passed for lo beguiling mother's kisses peeps a tooth naught for gifts is baby caring santa claus has many a gem but god's love and mother's sharing baby has no need of them End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. My Divinity by Arthur Weir Read for LibriVox.org by Eva Davis I am a god, yes, I. Smile, if you will, at the claim. Moat though I am in the ambient sky, Housed, I confess, in putrescible frame, still a divinity my sceptre i claim and perchance my altars as well who knows you would prick my pride with your wit's keen lance you know my radius well suppose you pipe i dance 
am i the primary cause that's my affair not my creatures did i create nature's adamant laws or am i but one of her manifold features fellow gods can pick flaws but the little corpuscles of blood i create by millions each hour do you fancy the witless ephemeral brood as each lives its life can my limits and power declare understood alone in the grey of my brain i sit and my universe rule what can they know of their god though they feign question perhaps each contemptible fool what joy is why pain do they brag of their universe boast worsting some hostile bacillus fight over their god sect term other sect lost read my ways or complain why torment us and kill us what fate has each ghost perfecting some large thought that may move the earth that i dwell on a million my creatures remorseless i slay am i annoyed if they call me a felon it is i or they my work for their sake shall i cease my very nature disjoint is there aught but destruction for all in such peace must i miracle work for a microscope point corpuscles to please we are not one we are twain yet are we one and not two they are the universe i am the brain in and about them knit through and through chords in one strain in common we have at least this creator and creature that we must rise to the height of our powers or miss life's best for ourselves and each other decree frustrate of bliss is now this godhead of mine my limits this difference vast between creature and maker a symbol in fine is mankind but a host of blood corpuscles massed through the divine end of poem this recording is in the public domain The Sleeping Soul by Arthur Weir Read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson Will ever thy soul awake, awake and come smiling to greet my own? Will ever the love light break from thine eyes upon me, Like the sun on the billows that shoreward run, Into foam by the winds of the ocean blown? To me seems thy pure soul sleeping, Thou hast in thy heart a bird, But its head is under its wing, I watch it and think with weeping how sweet a song it might sing, yet by love it is never stirred. Oft in the bush of a drowsy night I dream that I hear that low bird voice, lilting so merrily, singing so cheerily, bidding my heart to its depths rejoice. But alas, takes flight my dream before the dawn's lance of light. Alas, it is not for me to kiss thy soul, as the prince in story kissed the sleeping beauty's lips and to life love waken thee round thee there is a maiden glory fairer than circles the sun that dips into the sea while chill night comes creeping slowly silently through the sky but as well might i reach out my hand to the sun and try to make his glory my very own as think to touch with my finger-tips thy glorious beauty that shrinks from me End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Mother by Arthur Weir Read for LibriVox.org by Betty B. The Mother Down the bright pathway of life Where joy, like the throstle, was singing She passed, like a sun-gleam at dawn Through mistlands of sorrows and fears seeking the soul of the babe at her bosom now nursing and clinging and stood in the valley of death gloomed with a shadow of tears 
ghost glided past after ghost and shook ghastly arms at the mortal who dared to the valley of pain go down for the winning of life hour after hour trembled by as we crouched in our woe at the portal made strangers to her whom we loved by strangers who looked on her strife angel spake hope to her there as she stood in the veil of the shadow demons snarled at her heels she was haunted by visions abhorred but love was a lamp to her feet as she passed through the woe-blossomed meadow seeking the soul of her child she was brave for her trust was the lord death turned his sword as she came and she passed through the gateways of heaven treading the pavements of pearl and haloed with shimmering gleams on till the veil hung between immortal and mortal was riven and she brought from the garden of god the blue-eyed flower of her dreams end of poem this recording is in the public domain pluck flowers in youth by arthur weir read for librivox dot org by sonia pluck flowers in youth pluck flowers in youth nor heed how old tongues prate pluck flowers in youth in age it is too late pluck flowers when it is morn with flowers and you so soon they wither do not hesitate lest you should gather roses not but rue pluck flowers ere life grows cold and desolate and love turns hate pluck flowers in youth age is the time for wheat to age not even the rose itself is sweet pluck flowers pluck flowers in youth while faith is great ere life and joy grow cankered with deceit pluck flowers in youth no sadder thought brings fate than memory of scorned joys crushed by your feet in flight too fleet end of poem this recording is in the public domain O oh, foolish heart by arthur weir read for librivox dot org by iswa in belgium in january two thousand and seventeen o oh, foolish heart to flutter so with hope and fear o oh, treacherous blush to come and go when he is near why do ye to the world reveal the passion i would fain conceal o oh, ears that love to hear him speak o oh, downcast eyes whose lashes droop upon each cheek nor dare to rise do ye not know she sees and hears fond looks and words that cost me tears be brave mine heart if he despise give scorn for scorn be deaf mine ears be blind mine eyes yet so why mourn though she may claim him for her own my love my love is mine alone end of poem this recording is in the public domain My Heart is a Merry Rover by Arthur Weir, read for LiveRevox.org by Liz, 2017. My heart's a merry rover, though innocent of wrong, forever beauty's lover, yet never constant long. When coral lips are pouting, they're smiling to disguise. He kneels and loves, no doubting, they are his richest prize. Yet when amid his dreaming, he spies a bosom fair, at once the rogue is scheming to gain admittance there though should he see the tresses that frame a pretty head his love and his caresses he spins on them instead then if bright eyes confuse him with merry a saucy stare the lips the curls the bosom must mourn their worshipper and yet this merry rover is nothing if not true he's but one maiden's lover and dearest she is you End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Cigarette Smoker by Arthur Weir Read for LibriVox.org by Iswa in Belgium in January 2017 
Mark her as she stands, Blue eyes bright, match a light, Shielding with her hands The growing flame, Holding to her lips Where the bee, love, sips, The fragrant pleasure of man's leisure, Cigarette by name. There it makes her cough, if she smoke, must she choke when blue wells come off? Now she denies the cigarette, the bliss of her lips' sweet kiss, holds it burning to ash turning, till at last it dies. Thus she lit my heart, by the fell magic spell of love's witching art, and just as I, burned with passion's fire, shrank from my desire, let my yearning and heart burning into ashes die. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Take Me As You Find Me by Arthur Weir, read for LibriVox.org by Tavarish. Take me as you find me, take me so, else from love unbind me, let me go. To twin gifts God gave me, body and soul, these shall lose or save me as years roll. I can never alter, I must wend onward thus, nor falter to the end. If you love, then love me, sweetheart, so you'll not look above me nor below. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. At the Tryst by Arthur Weir Read for LibriVox.org by Tavarish The evening stars are shining Amid the gloom of air Like gold and jewels twining Among thy golden hair. They guard the dawn's shut portal and count the moments fleet o oh, maiden we are mortal why hasten not thy feet the moonlight and the shadows are wooing by the stream and far across the meadows thy windows brightly gleam my eager heart is beating beneath the trysting tree the evening hours are fleeting. Why comest thou not to me? End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Sonnets in California by Arthur Weir. Read for LibriVox.org by Tavarish. On a flask of water taken from the Pacific at Santa Monica, California. From seas Alaskan, where, through sunless days, the grinding ice flows cast a spectral glare, I come to shores where, through the golden air, palms wave and bees dip in the orange sprays. From shores Siberian, where the keen out praise on women when with torture and despair i come a voiceless palpitating prayer where freedom dwells yet succor still delays from far cathay the oldest land of lands a giant sunk in poppied dreamful rest i come where earth's great last-born nation stands flower of the centuries the titanic west i come where east and west stand face to face the childhood and the manhood of the race spring in the south through the quaint southern winter without snow without an icy blast or chilling air when the broad mesas arid lie and bare, the Ishmael cactus and the sagebrush grow. The golden orange bends the lithe branch low, the sunflowers throng the byways everywhere, palms wave, birds sing, 
the earth lies free of care basking in skies one golden cloudless glow then come the rains and in their cottage bring streams to the canyons and to ranch and glen wild flowers and orange blossoms wherein rides the bee on golden zephyrs swiftly then like wind-blown fire up the sierra sides a blaze of poppies run and it is spring a winter day in the sierras o'er the sierras scarce the moon yestreen was risen to flood each sombre peak with light ere came a cloud host through the gusty night storming the crags sheer canyon walls between they swept and hid bare ledge and living green hoarse thunder pealed from unseen height to height as though the vast hills boasted of their might though chaos self upon them seemed to lean dawn drew aside night's veil of mist and came across the hills the clouds retired and low on every wind-swept crag as day looked forth bright in the southern sunshine gleamed the snow a vision of the unforgotten north twixt golden skies and poppy fields aflame in the valley snow on the hills but in the valley flowers poppies aflame and orange blooms whose scent with the faint odor of the snow is blent snow on the peaks but in the canyons showers and torrents drinking strength from stormy hours the geese wheel seaward through the clouds half spent fleeing the snow and screaming discontent but in the vale birds trill in blossomy bowers summer is in the vale though in the heights the bandit winter lurks to seize his prey still springs the grain vines grow and fruit delights sun and soft wind through many a golden day in many an eden valley nestling warm below the stern sierras wrapped in storm End of section. This recording is in the public domain. The Pool of Saint Olene by Arthur Weir, read for LibriVox.org by Tavarish. Sierra Madre, California. Ere yet the Spanish cavalier for this new world set sail, ere yet the padres came anear San Gabriel's sunny vale, ere yet the thirst for gold drew men across the western hills, I rippled down this rocky glen, the happiest of rills. The shadows of the spreading oak oft lay upon my breast, oft through the brown madronas broke the bear upon his quest past starry yuccas to my brink at many a crimson dawn the mountain lion came to drink and oft a timid fawn the golden moments came and went of many a sunny year and still i rippled on content and solitary here at times a weary miner came and quaffed my cooling stream at times i saw the campfire flame of hardy hunters gleam though oft i paused to hear some bird trill in the leaves above a maid i never saw nor heard nor knew the name of love oh there was never rivulet so merry in a glen but now i never can forget nor merry be again she came in thoughtless girlish mood the dizzy trail along upon my ferny marge she stood and listened to my song 
I saw her, and I leapt for glee in many a lucent wave, and when she stopped to drink from me, my very heart I gave. She passed, and now no more I sing among the granite hills, instead my ceaseless murmuring the sombre canyon fills. O oh, ye to whom that maid divine hath also heartless been, come join your mournful plaint with mine, the pool of Saint Olin. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Winter in the South by Arthur Weir, read for LibriVox.org by Tavarish. At home the blossoms are asleep beside the frost-bound rills. At home the snow is drifting deep upon the windy hills. At home the ice king mocks the sun, the woods are drear and bare, and of the birds there is not one left singing anywhere. But here the fields are green with grain, the mesas bright with flowers. The birds repeat each dulcet strain they learned in Eden's bowers. Midst ripening fruit the orange trees have mingled odorous blooms, and here and there the eager bees hum through the golden glooms. The swart sierras, crowned with snow, stand knee-deep in the green, like patriarchs, smiling as they go, blithe groups of youth between. Behind them is the burning sand of the Mojave waste, before the warm Pacific strand by golden seas embraced. When in the palm tree's shade I rest, through a many a perfect day, my heart would fain forget life's quest and live in dreams away. But when upon the snow-clad hills mine eyes again look forth, I wake, thy spell my bosom thrills, stern homeland in the north. Give me the seasons of the year, the bursting of the leaf, the northern summer brief but dear, and autumn's golden sheaf. Give me the wintry moon's pale gleam, with snow and storm at strife. The south is a bewitching dream, but in the north is life. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Kindergarten by Arthur Weir, read for LibriVox.org by Tavarish. O blossoming lives that to the fruits now ripened for the gathering in speak of old days ere life's pursuits touch the new soul with taint of sin. We who now watch you at your game, we weary of the toil and strife, must envy you your scorn of fame, your eager, loving trust in life. Perchance the babe that thoughtless piles his blocks unsteadily in air may yet a minster build, whose aisles shall echo to a nation's prayer. Perchance the child that scarce can tell the letters on his cubes of wood may yet with a poetic spell charm and uplift the multitude. They question not, they only live to pluck the blossoms of each hour. Ambition frets them not, they give no thought to pomp or place or power. We too have toys, and we pursue our trivial aims, we rage and sigh because our blocks are built askew, and our best hopes in ruins lie. Yet over us, as over these, a teacher watches true and kind, striving to guide our fantasies and patient with the groping mind. From flower of wisdom unto flower, he leads us as these babes are led, till chimes at last the closing hour, the prizes won, the lessons said. 
and happy he who in this school of life that fits the soul for death has learned to serve as well as rule and speak for truth with every breath end of poem this recording is in the public domain The Poet by Arthur Weir, read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson. The budding flower that wakes at dewy morn attains perfection through the sun swept day. The poets, to life's highest mission born, by slow unfolding reach the perfect lay. And like the harp attuned to every breeze that in the open casement sighs or sings, the poet soul is void of melodies till unseen spirit fingers sweep the strings life the magician with his subtle powers death the dark helmsman over seas unknown nature all mother and the teaching hours through him their grand mysterious chants intone and oft his numbers falter and his song in discord breaks ere he can hymn again the anthems of the wondrous spirit throng and voice strange thoughts beyond our mortal ken and off the world and the world's sins enmesh his soul which still the pitying spirits calm and in the warfare between soul and flesh his heart oft rises to the noblest psalm but should he cease to wage the upward strife or thrall himself a slave to evil's power too proud the muse to bless a craven life too pure a sinful heart with song to dower for the true poet throwing down his gauge to fate fights upward far beyond life's mist and with the broadened vision of the sage beholds all earth by hope's warm sun gleams kissed he learns that all who would be truly great mix with the battling world nor shirk their part but take such trials as are given by fate and set them to sweet music by their art he only is a poet who can find in sorrow happiness in darkness light love everywhere and lead his fellow kind by flowery paths towards life's sunny height end of poem this recording is in the public domain gold tresses by arthur weir Read for LibriVox.org by Betty B. Gold Tresses My love is now a woman grown, About her shoulders fall no more, Her locks in beauty all their own, Their days of liberty are o'er, No longer may with soft caress The zephyr's unseen hand uplift, Each net-like golden threaded tress, To catch the sunlight's moted drift. I know each tress and have a name, whereby my memory holds it dear from that which is her forehead's frame to that which hides her shelly ear and one there is i love to touch on which my heart first suffered wreck that sometimes fell aside too much and showed the ivory of her neck and though tis bound upon her head and all its beauty hid from me still other charms i see instead and still am in captivity I see the grace of neck and ear unveiled that erst beneath the tress, but peeped as pearly seashells peer through ocean's weedy wilderness. Ye captive tresses that disdained my love and wantoned in the wind, I know your grief, for I was chained, her slave ere ye were thus confined. She hath but gloried in our love and laughs to find us strain our gyves come let us slaves unite and prove that power to break her bond survives aid me with love her heart to chain and soon when she and i are wed my hands shall set ye free again to wanton sweetly round her head end of poem this recording is in the public domain en route by Arthur Weir, read for LibriVox.org by Bruce Kachuk. By town and hamlet, field and wood, 
past glimpses of empurpled hills o'er many a broad sun-smitten flood and many a myriad tinkling rills the train swings on and brings us twain each minute nearer by a mile while i to chafe at time am fain which holds me sundered from thy smile i see among the emerald trees embowered the village church spires gleam i see white homestead front the breeze and of our own sweet home i dream while still the fleet train brings us twain each minute nearer by a mile and fewer moments yet remain to hold me sundered from thy smile the wheat fields shimmer in the sun sleek cattle in the meadows browse nor lift their heads as past we run the lithe-limbed steeds and patient cows and still the fleet train brings us twain each minute nearer by a mile till scarce a moment doth remain to hold me sundered from thy smile onward we sweep yet all our speed leaves not pursuing night behind stars sparkle in the sky's broad mead and homeward plods the weary hind and still the fleet train brings us twain each minute nearer by a mile until my heart is home again and i am basking in thy smile end of poem this recording is in the public domain at dawn by arthur weir read for LibriVox.org by bruce Kachuk. at dawn of day a shaft of light pierces the sable breast of night which dropping many a sable plume flits far into the nether gloom all silently at dawn of day the sun's first beam dispels the mist that hides the stream and scatters from the hill and wood the clouds that there did sit and brood formless and gray and when the night from earth is driven and clouds and mist have fled from heaven the waking birds take eager flight up through the golden rain of light with happy song into my life that knew no day a maiden winged a kindly ray and flying wearily and slow far fled the sombre bird of woe i harbored long my heart no longer pined in night the mists that hid hope's stream took flight life's hills a sunnier aspect took and i found many a pleasant nook within life's grove and now my thoughts like birds arise singing towards the golden skies afar from earthly doubt and strife through the pure radiance of her life on wings of love end of poem this recording is in the public domain my star by arthur weir read for LibriVox.org by bruce Kachuk. there is a star in the pure ether high my other home it is where to when sorrow threatens me i fly and in my flight towards the vaulted sky the hated sorrows roll down from my fleet-winged soul as from the seagull's circling form the spray drops to the storm-vexed bay its pinions erst did kiss well said the seer that overstudy brought a weariness of the flesh and oft my brain worn with its overthought watches the night steal past while sleep comes not 
then doth my star arise slowly before my eyes steady serene and cold yet heavenly bright and while my grief takes flight binds all my thoughts in leash no longer fear and discontent combine to make my future drear for i arise and from that star of mine look down and see our small earth dimly shine and all life's joy and pain their proper worth obtain and i to smile at all past fears begin for earth's discordant din is stilled and god i hear end of poem this recording is in the public domain to a picture by arthur weir read for LibriVox.org by bruce kachuk o stately head o rippling grace of tresses flowing free o dark-eyed queenly thoughtful face awake and comfort me since love can thrill with noble zeal the meanest of us all it may thy glorious form reveal thy tender soul recall then come thou from thy gilded cage and nestle by my side and i will be thy faithful page if thou wilt be my bride come trustful eyes and trust in me o oh, sweet one heed my cry speak sad sweet mouth i wait for thee to bid me live or die tell me no artist's godlike mind to thy fair face gave birth but that his vision i may find alive upon this earth and i will seek her far and wide in palace and in cot and love shall once more conquer pride and she shall share my lot end of poem this recording is in the public domain the poet and his rhymes by arthur weir read for librivox org by larry wilson whoever reads a poet's rhyme to find the poet there might equally essay to climb to castles in the air he lives not in reality or rather lives too much he makes a forest of a tree a palace of a hutch to-day a transient pang appears his life's eternal sorrow but he is laughing through his tears and full of joy to-morrow for if there's oft the germ of truth the flower is fancy's own tis the world's heart he shows in sooth and he is still unknown and sometimes in his happiest days without excuse or cause he pins the mournfullest of lays to win the world's applause and from the saddest heart at times the merriest stanzas flow friend think not by the poet's rhymes the poet's heart to know in the poem this recording is in the public domain to an infant by arthur weir read for librivox dot org by betty b to an infant o little one new-born i would i were like thee then were this whole world scorn and praise alike to me then would i look on life as do thine azure eyes and know how vain its strife how paltry what we prize tradition cannot claim dominion over thee nor fear the pinions maim of thy young soul and free all things to thee are new thy mind runs in no groove thou dost both false and true question alike and prove thou art no shadowy soul but the incarnate eye and thou wilt reach thy goal or failing thou wouldst die indomitable will that makes us all obey if i were childlike still 
i were more man to-day end of poem this recording is in the public domain to scotland by arthur weir read for LibriVox .org by esther camus miles upon miles of ocean twixt scotland roll and me its hills and dales i have not seen and scarce expect to see the homestead of my fathers the keen ploughshare has torn and where the hearth once welcomed all waves now the golden corn o canada my country my love for thee is deep yet i fain would see the old churchyard where my forefathers sleep and fondly ever fondly my heart in secret yearns that its songs may find a welcome in the bonny land of burns upon the scottish heather i opened not my eyes i cannot speak the sweet scotch tongue remote my pathway lies yet scotland mother scotland though fate as twain may part i claim my heritage of thee for i have the scottish heart End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Rosina Vokes by Arthur Weir Read for LibriVox.org by Sonia Rosina Vokes The years may come, the years may go, And many a song be sung Across the footlight's golden glow By many a silvery tongue. But though new divas charm the ear, still memory shall recall one song we never more shall hear his art was true to paul for who that hath the singer's heart will care to sing that song to those whom she with witching art had held in thrall so long let other songs our pulses stir delight us with them all but leave unsung for sake of her his art was true to paul time was when every heart beat high each lip was wreathed in smiles to hear her sing that melody with all her witching wiles but now twould be no song of mirth twould bid the sad tears fall for though she dwells no more on earth our arts are true to paul end of poem this recording is in the public domain A Little Maid by Arthur Weir Read for LibriVox.org by Iswa in Belgium in February 2017 I know a maid beyond compare For virtue sweet and beauty rare. Her eyes are turquoise and her hair Is sunlight netted. She has her lovers, great and small, The quiet student, wise and tall, The child that hugs its battered doll by them she's petted her heart seems ever warm and gay in smiles and kindly words each day she scatters round her on life's way love beyond measure the wild flowers as she passes by bloom sweeter for her being nigh the bird that mounts into the sky sings for her pleasure her sorrows she is wont to hide her joys she shares on every side. She is her doting mother's pride, her father's jewel. If we, who style this world so bad, but strove like her to make it glad, life then would seem by far less sad, nor half so cruel. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Samson and Delilah by Arthur Weir Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo Thou art o'er bold, Delilah, thus to try Thy traitor's arts upon a soul like mine, And lure me to eternal slavery With glances warm like wine. One clasp of my strong hands It will could break thy tender body Like a fragile flower, how darest thou pray of my heart to make and plot against my power hast thou no fear the brute in me will rise wrathful and tear thy shapely limbs apart and dull the jewelled lustre of thine eyes and still thy faithless heart 
why dost thou let me look upon thy face and see myself embowered in thine eyes and every curve of thy lithe figure trace beneath thy robe's disguise what harm have i wrought thee that thou shouldst stand and menace all my life with one great woe thou hast me in the hollow of thy hand take me or let me go end of poem this recording is in the public domain my lady's bonnet by arthur weir read for librivox dot org by betty b my lady's bonnet my lady has a stylish bonnet bedecked with ribbons gay and bright and with a song-bird perched upon it with tiny wings outspread for flight its little beak is opened wide as though in its most joyous trill the harmless thing had suddenly died one waits to hear it carol still my lady has a tender heart she feeds the poor instructs the young at tale of woe her tears will start and words of kindness throng her tongue my lady's eyes are full of glee but cloud and with just anger flash if in her walk she chanced to see some poor beast cringe beneath the lash my lady has a stylish bonnet bedecked with ribbons gay and bright but with a slaughtered bird upon it my gentle lady is this right end of poem this recording is in the public domain Flowers and Fears by Arthur Weir, read for LibriVox.org by Eva Davis. She had been in the fields at play through golden summer hours, and brought with her at close of day a cluster of wild flowers. And when she slept, we went to see the little one at rest, our own sweet flower, and there, ah me the flowers lay on her breast her little brow was smooth and white her merry eyes were closed she smiled as though some heavenly sprite whispered as she reposed she looked so pure so white so fair below the ominous flowers she seemed a blossom plucked from care to bloom in heavenly bowers and oh the whelming flood of pain the sudden sense of dearth we kissed her o'er and o'er again and brought her back to earth end of poem this recording is in the public domain the rosebud by arthur weir Sung for LibriVox.org by Iswa in Belgium in February 2017. In my garden a rosebud is growing, is growing so fast, will be blossoming soon. Around it the zephyrs are balmily blowing, the sweet scented zephyrs of June, of June the odorous zephyrs of june my love shall watch over and protect and protect it while shyly its petals unfold the bees shall not trouble nor the canker affect it nor night make it tremble with cold with cold nor night make it shudder with cold and when it is blown i'll bear it i'll bear it to her whom i worship alone on her beauteous bosom she'll lay it and wear it and rival its charms by her own her own and shame all its grace by her own end of poem this recording is in the public domain neil desperandum by arthur weir read for 
by Liz, 2017. Life with life is woven in, neither sorrow nor delight, neither nobleness nor sin, known to one but falls upon all men with its grace or blight. He who sinks into despair, he who from his task recoils, makes his fellow laborers bear on life's road a heavier load. Someone for each sluggard toils. What though failure crown our task, tis the portal to success. Often fortune wears a mask. Face the strife and live your life. Be no coward to distress. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Flesh and Spirit by Author Ware. Read for LibriVox.org by Christina. Say what you will, if love would have its fill, though it may feed long on the one dear face, and never is content save in embrace. Say what you will, though passion have its fill, and never is content, nor has delight, if love come not to sanctify the right. Harmonious flesh and spirit, these only shall inherit the joys of earth, and in the dread to be, now death itself shall break thy unity. Woe to the narrow heart which strive these twain to part. Look down the ages through the world's mad din. This is the one unpardonable sin. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. In Church by Arthur Weir, read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson. I never feel so near to God in heaven as when I kneel in worship at thy side, and hear thy humble prayer to be forgiven for sake of him who for our saving died. And though I do not mingle with thy prayer plea of my own, but silent bow my head, so close our souls are knit I seem to share the bounteous blessings God on thee doth shed. I hear the choir their joyous praises singing, but not their voices soften my flinty heart. Thine only in my inmost soul is ringing, bidding peace enter, grief and sin depart. And as the music through my pulse is stealing, the rampart of my pride a ruin falls, even as of old the Jewish trumpets pealing shook down of haughty Jericho the walls. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Sucker the Children by Arthur Weir. Read for LibriVox.org by Betty B. Sucker the Children. Wan hands that never grasp a flower, ear stranger to the wild bird's song, to rule where shall they find the power, how wage life's battle right the wrong when the great hour of duty comes how shall they meet the mighty toil whose blood is tainted by the slums whose ears know but the street's turmoil succor the children of the street and teach them in the fields to play nor let them in the stifling heat of crowded cities fade away that when we drop the thread of life and dreamless sleep beneath the sod they may be ready for the strife that brings this planet nearer God. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Sunset Lesson by Author Ware, read for LibriVox.org by Christina. I watched the sun one summer eve sink slowly in the west and the quiet sea in fleecy clouds and rosy robes were dressed i saw the evening glide away yet still the sea and sky as faint the stars on twilight grew were full of majesty and as upon the breezy hill i turned to sky and sea methought that nature spake and bade my spirit guiltless be that as the deepening shades of age close round me like the night the memory of my past might still life's evening guild with light end of poem this recording is in the public domain
as from the nectar laden lily by arthur weir read for librivox dot org by eva davis as from the nectar laden lily the wild bee sips a british queen sweet maiden drained with her loving lips the poison that was filling her husband's veins with death her love with new life thrilling his heart with each drawn breath not less thy love sweet maiden nor less thy bravery for when i came o'erladen with poisoned hopes to thee with smiles and shy caresses the venom thou didst drain and healing my distresses didst give new life again end of poem this recording is in the public domain mummy thoughts by arthur weir read for LibriVox.org by Tavarish. once those who sought for relics of the past stumbled by chance on an etruscan tomb and saw a monarch sitting in the gloom sceptred and crowned their eager hearts beat fast and on the masonry themselves they cast to seize the wonder as throughout the room the axe stroke rang it knelled the monarch's doom he fell to dust and left them all aghast so oft while searching through the realms of mind i have discovered many a kingly thought in solitary grandeur throned and crowned and striven to bear it forth only to find that when the first stroke of my pen did sound it fell to dust and lo i had it not end of poem this recording is in the public domain to certain nature poets by arthur weir read for librivox dot org by Tavarish. friends such i call you for it is not meet to hail ye brethren in the tuneful art since i but falter though of earnest heart friends i have thought reading your measures sweet your verses though with many a charm replete were bettered did they some high thought impart or in man's conscience plant a sudden dart why proffer roses when the world craves wheat who paints a picture hath ill done his task if he show not the soul in that he paints why give to mere description all your lays while that the eye beholds is but a mask to some grand truth the poet's hand should raise revealing that for which man's spirit faints end of poem this recording is in the public domain The Patriarch's Death by Arthur Weir Read for LibriVox.org by Tavarish The birds that twitter in the budding trees And build their nests in some umbrageous grove Through early summer guard the young they love And fill the air with tuneful melodies Then as the fledglings wake from dreamful ease eager throughout the unknown world to rove the parents teach them their new strength to prove and beat with fearless wings the summer breeze and then the nest sways empty on the bough the parents weary although sweet the task take flight to other haunts to rest from care the fledglings in the glowing sunbeams bask living their life so is it everywhere the patriarch dies he is but resting now end of poem this recording is in the public domain oh were it not by author ware read for librivox dot org by christina oh were it not for one fair face one angel voice one loving smile the world would be a dreary place 
and life to me not worth the while methinks the sun shines but to show how wondrous fair the maiden is methinks the warm winds only blow that they may kiss her draperies i know the roses bloom that they may live an hour upon her breast i know that i would willingly share their brief life to share their nest end of poem this recording is in the public domain farewell by author ware read for LibriVox.org by christina when the heart speaks the lips are still and if i cannot say farewell tis that a thousand yearnings thrill my heart and hold my lips in spell let thine own heart the thoughts express my lips would speak yet why repine i knew thee and at least can bless thy life though sundered far from mine end of poem this recording is in the public domain the tide by arthur weir read for librivox dot org by iswa in belgium in february two thousand and seventeen twice in the day a mighty tide there rolls throughout our city streets a limitless deep sea of human souls each wave a heart that beats ah me what various ships are drifting there upon that living sea what guile and innocence what joy what care what utter misery at morn it ebbs far from home's golden shore into the sea of life where its dark billows meet and foam and roar in never-ending strife at night it flows far from the mart's turmoil backward upon its way where wives and children bring sweet rest from toil till dawns another day from year to year tis thus these waters move life's duty is to fulfil obedient to the silvery moon of love that rules them at its will end of poem this recording is in the public domain My Comrade by Arthur Weir Read for LibriVox.org by Tavarish Could I have had you made a boy And both be young through life Methinks I might forego The joy of calling you my wife For sweet as is the kiss of love And all our converse stayed Still dearer to our hearts Doth prove some wayward escapade when from behind your glistening foil you dare me to the fray from sober spousehood i recoil it is on guard straightway and when we urge our light canoe upon some sparkling tide more prone am i to think of you as comrade than a bride ah were you but a youth like me who could unawed recline by huge campfire beneath some tree upon a couch of pine and could you press through marsh and brake and thrive on hunter's food what sweet excursions we might make to nature's solitude yet if you were a youth some maid might lure you from my side so i shall wish you still comrade my dainty fair-haired bride end of poem this recording is in the public domain my gift by arthur weir read for librivox dot org by Tavarish. i bring a gift that all may bring so common tis to humankind and yet it is so rare a king his crown for it had well resigned it is a gift gold cannot buy and one which never can be sold a gift no mortal can deny and one that fades not 
nor grows old and while i would not have it spurned such is my heart's perversity unless i know my gift returned life hath no joy in store for me end of poem this recording is in the public domain Hamlin's Mill by Arthur Weir, read for LibriVox.org by Tavarish. Brightly the sun that summer day upon the charming scene was shining, and warm the thrifty village lay amid its silent fields reclining. The river, like a silver thread, wound round the hazy, shimmering hill, till, plunging o'er the dam, it fled in eddies down to Hamlin's Mill along the pathway through the grove beneath the shady trees we hurried the birds were twittering above while in and out the squirrels scurried we took the narrow road which wound through clearings that were smoking still and soon now merry chat was drowned amidst the noise at hamlin's mill we stood within the sunlit room and watched the busy bobbins turning then gathered round a jangling loom the flying shuttle's secret learning across the mossy flume we crept whose leaky sides their burden spill and stood beside the pond where slept the giant power of hamlin's mill beside the ceaseless loom of fate we stand and watch what it is weaving the warp is spun of love and hate the woof of merriment and grieving but far beyond earth's noise and the dust there rules the one stupendous will the power in which his creatures trust as in the mill pond, Hamlin's Mill. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. A Ballad of Joy by Arthur Weir. Read for LibriVox.org by Tavarish. Dear one who was the chosen, a time was made, the heart of my heart and my wife to be who camest with the gifts of the gods arrayed to lighten the labours of life for me ere yet i had looked on the face of thee my soul dreamed dreams and awoke and said none other is worthier love than she and earth shall be heaven when we are wed but woe as a burden on man is laid and the soul finds its vision not readily between us came many a mocking shade that smiled with the smile of my fantasy and i thought can it be i have met with thee then the arrows of truth through the false were sped and i heard thy soul murmuring cheeringly the earth shall be heaven when we are wed like streams in the hollows of hills that played though sundered by league upon league they be that slipping through tangles of sun and shade meet mingle and flow to this shoreless sea at last my soul met with the soul of thee and woes fell from me as leaves fall dead when winds have wakened the sleeping tree and earth became heaven when we were wed and now though years like the birds may flee and death draw nigh us with noiseless tread i reek not how soon may the summons be for earth became heaven when we were wed end of poem this recording is in the public domain Remembrance by Arthur Weir, 
Read for LibriVox.org by Tavarish. From the German of Friedrich Mattison. I think of thee when through the break the nightingales sweet music make. When dost thou think of me? I think of thee by the shady well under the twilight's glimmering spell. Where dost thou think of me? I think of thee with pleasant pain, with yearning while the hot tears rain. How dost thou think of me? Oh, think of me till in some star we meet again. However far I think of none but thee. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Glove by Arthur Weir Read for LibriVox.org by Tavarish A narrow glen with winding sides Bestrewn with rocks and gloomed with trees Grey rolling clouds chased by the breeze A stream which through the valley glides Among the trees that climb the hill The eager squirrels call the crows and sharply sound the sudden blows of some woodpecker's greedy bill. The blood root, crouching in the grass from its protecting broad leaf peers, the horsetails shake aloft their spears like foemen at us as we pass. Here, wandering with a friend I love, our speech with sparrow chattered round, he in the little valley found an early violet, I a glove. The flower grew beside a stone, and shyly peered above the sod, while distant from it not a rod, the dainty glove lay all alone. Some child had drawn it from her hand to dabble in the sunny spring, and then the thoughtless little thing had left it lying on the rand and as i saw the symbols there of budding life and blossoming spring arose and from my heart took wing to heaven a brief and heartfelt prayer o little child wherever thou art and in whatever station set be modest like the violet and act in life an earnest part that as the streamlet by the sun is gently lifted to the skies, thy soul may unto heaven arise, whene'er its earthly course is run. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Magic Bow by Arthur Weir Read for LibriVox.org by Tavarish from the French of Charles Croix. Rippling low to her dainty feet, Tress with tress did mingle and meet, Yellow as ripening August wheat. Her voice had an eerie melody, Like that of an angel or a fay. Beneath dusk lashes her eyes shone grey. He by no rival swain said store, as valleys through or mountains o'er the maid upon his steed he bore for all the land had held not one that she in her pride would look upon to the day she met him and was undone love did her fond heart so enchain that when her lover smiled disdain she to sicken and die was fain as she lay dying on his arm she said bind thy bow with my locks to charm the maid to whom thy heart grows warm one long wild kiss and the maid was dead the shimmering aureole round her head he bound to his bow as she had said then as a blind man mournfully sweeps his cremona so did he 
and went forth seeking charity and all were thrilled with ecstasy for the dead lived within the lay and with her songs all hearts did sway the king showered honors on his head the dark-eyed queen to honor dead with him by moonlight swiftly fled but when to please her he essayed to play no more the bow obeyed but mournfully did him upbraid and at its plaint the sinful twain in mid-flight by remorse were slain and the dead had her pledge again her locks that to her dainty feet rippling low did mingle and meet yellow as ripening august wheat end of poem this recording is in the public domain at the seaside by arthur weir read for LibriVox.org by larry wilson o sun with thy ardent glance thou hast made my darling flush but the swarthier tints enhance the charms of her modest blush thou hast lent thy warmth and light to the gleam of her melting eyes till a glance in their depths so bright seems a peep into paradise o sea with thy great white arms thou hast stolen my love from me thou hast clasped to thy breast her charms she has rested her head on thee thou hast tangled her silken hair and kissed her face and her lips ah love he is false beware of that spoiler of men and ships end of poem this recording is in the public domain The Orphans by Arthur Weir Read for LibriVox.org by Betty B. The Orphans Shall walls have pity and man's heart have none? Shall walls protect and man refuse to aid? At Christmas, when our children are arrayed in furs, Shall orphans crouch behind a stone to hide them from the storm? Is there not one will see the outstretched hand of that frail maid? to whom the baby brother clings afraid will no ear heed when hunger makes its moan no father's arm about their forms is thrown to shield them from distress no mother's love draws them within the shelter of her breast those tender souls must front the world alone but if christ came not vainly from above some noble heart will aid them thus distressed End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Aladdin's Lamp by Arthur Weir Read for LibriVox.org by Liz 2017 Aladdin's Lamp of Eastern Tale, which claimed my simple faith in youth, Its loss no longer I bewail, but hold it mine in very truth. The genie waits but my command to raise me and as swift as thought bear me abroad from land to land wherever i would fain be brought amid the silent northern snows or where the egyptian deserts burn wherever man has been he goes and tells me all i wish to learn he tells me how the stars had birth and how their wondrous cycles run or places me beyond the earth unharmed upon the giant sun through him i learn what science knows how this vast universe began how life from mean beginnings rose high as god's noblest creature man on me dawns many a truth profound about the swinging earth i tread that it is one vast burying ground the living living through the dead that where once flowed the ocean's tide now stand the homes of countless souls that where once mountains rose in pride billow on foaming villa rolls the genie stems the flood of time and bears me almost to its source then as we float bid scenes sublime and sad and happy shore our course i see the tower of babel rise with busy builders everywhere 
up ever up towards the skies spearing the azure depths of air i hear the voice from out a cloud and see the workmen making signs how humble god can make the proud how easily mar man's best designs i see the wild light tresses fall and cruel waves on faded rome and in an emperor's audience hall i see the jackals make their home sleek monks i see within their cells and knights in burnished armor housed i hear the chime of marriage bells for maids whom death hath long espoused i hear the poet's stirring strain that wins him immortality and weep with such as found with pain their idle but ignoble clay writ by the fearless luther pen the words that stirred the world i see i hear the tramp of armed men and know that thought at last is free the joys and hopes the griefs and fears defeats and conquests of the race through all the swift eventful years the genie at my wish will trace and though he builds no palace vast for me nor gives me queen for bride while i am free to all the past i ask for him no boon besides end of poem this recording is in the public domain Song by Arthur Weir, read for LibriVox.org by Iswa in Belgium, in February 2017. When a maiden's heart is tender, and her soul as pure as snow, when her eyes with sunny splendor set her countenance aglow, when her every move discovers newer graces without end, she can win a hundred lovers yet may hunger for a friend. Pearly teeth and curly tresses, ruby lips in smiles that part, these will lure a man's caresses, easily enslave his heart. Yet, when all is said and over, even though souls in passion blend, she has only one more lover, and may hunger for a friend. Blind I am not, no, nor callous. Beauty hath its charm for me. Yet would I, beyond life's shallows, push towards the depthless sea. Friendship's true, and love's a rover. Love is selfish in the end. Choose thee, sweet, whatever lover. Let me still remain thy friend. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Quatrains by Arthur Weir, read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson. One. The oyster turns into a gem, the sand that chafes it long. My woes, can I not banish them? I round into a song. Two. Fear less the villain than the fool. The villain may be red, but heaven itself can set no rule to judge an adult head. 3. Nurse thou no sorrow, only learn all that it has to teach. And lo, a glorious gem shall burn upon the brow of each. 4. The bard alone immortal is, in death he liveth still and godlike with a word of his makes deathless whom he will five would they but speak who proved but weak to those who think self strong how they would cry continually beware the first small wrong six to felix morris twin arts are ours to act and write and yours perhaps the greater is you bring the world before men's sight, I can but proffer fantasies. 7. Flowers are earth's resurrection, yet the rocks e'er raised in blossoms first shall fall to dust. Take comfort then, O brother, when life mocks thine aspirations, as perforce life must. 8. Man loves the ideal, but not the maid. Her he but garlands with hopes and dreams, and worships not her in those wreaths arrayed, but the vision of fancy, 
that then she sings. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. End of Snowflake and Other Poems by Arthur Weir.